Laurent Barad. I'm a principal at SAS within the RQS division. I'm the head of uh, CISO and IFRS 9 for the Americas. CISO and IFRS 9 are the same thing for different jurisdictions, right? So they're the new allowance uh, guidance uh, that's been developed by, you know, uh, accounting bodies worldwide. So IFRS is the sort of worldwide body. CISL has been, has been um, is the implementation of the IFRS 9 guidance in the U.S. flavor. And I think Japan also has some of these uh, same CISL guidance. Now, uh, the concept is that rather than waiting for a loan to show any kind of distress or some trigger threshold, which uh, brings you to reserve against it, uh, what the standard says is, no, on day one, you must reserve against that loan for the potential loss that that loan has. Now, IFRS 9 says if the credit since origination has not shown signs of deterioration, you reserve for 12 months. If it has shown signs of deterioration, then you reserve for a lifetime loss. Right? That's the biggest the, the premise of what, uh, of what IFRS 9 does. In the U.S., they thought of that standard as being too complicated. You know, the stage allocation and whatnot. So in the U.S., what the standard says is when you, when you are on day one origination, you will originate the loan and recognize a lifetime loss, expect, expected lifetime loss for that loan right booked right on day one, right? So the, 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 the larger lines are like this, and of course it applies to amortized costs, to health and maturity assets. There's some tweaks and differences, and notably in credit card portfolios and other small tweak differences, like I think IFRS 9 asks that you consider weighted scenarios, right? So not just the base case, but at least two or three scenarios, and then and then melt those scenarios together to come up with a number. In the U.S., you don't have to consider scenarios. You can have just the baseline scenario, but I think most U.S. banks will run multiple scenarios just as a what if or a gut feel check to what would happen and maybe make some overlays over top. But all in all, the, the, you know, the process is that you're changing the way in which you're recognizing your allowance such that you're, recognize, you're recognizing the potential of a loss much earlier. And of course, this was driven by the financial crisis in 2008, where they said, we started reserving much too late in the process, now we want to reverse this. And of course, this guidance is subject to forecast based on macroeconomic factors, right? So any environmental factors, factors are now considered into uh, into the forecast rather than, you know, previously was that, you know, what are the current conditions and historical conditions? Now you're looking at forward looking. So it's very, it brings it into sync with, uh, with CCAR stress testing type thing where you're now doing forecast of risk and of the business and a forward looking view.